Now over the years on this channel we've had our fair share of project cars. It all started with that high mileage GTI and whilst it's great to move on to bigger and better things I've always been fond of the Mark V Golf. It's just a perfect balance of cost, practicality and also tuning capabilities. The most recent one I had was the Red R32 which I unfortunately sold at the start of last year. Since then I always knew I'd get another but it'd have to be a three door blue R32 with a DSG. I'm usually not too fussed on spec and just get whatever's cheapest but this time being that we've had a few Mark V's it's gonna have to be that combo and in regards to another GTI I'm kind of done with the TFSI platform at this point and besides we just got that Scirocco R a few months ago with that exact powertrain so you can imagine my surprise one day scrolling Facebook marketplace as you do and seeing this three owner masterpiece listed for £2,850 with 176,000 miles on the clock. Yes that's correct a three door DSG R32 finished in deep blue pearl with a two at the start of its price. The ad was nearly a day old so I figured it's probably gone by now but I thought I'd message anyway. It turned out the seller was a lad called Hamid who was actually a long time viewer of the channel. He said he'd been inundated by people wanting to buy it, no real surprise there with that price but he was willing to let me view it first as he'd like to see it on the channel. So I jumped in the car and drove three hours to Bradford which is where it was located. Yes yeah, not the most ideal place to buy a car let alone a fast golf but I'm from Birmingham so I can't exactly speak. And there it was in all its rusty glory. I knew from the pics that it was going to be rough visually but all I cared about was whether the engine was good and if it had any sills left underneath. Well it passed both of those tests. I could jack the car up on its pinch well despite the sea of brown metal and the engine sounded pretty much perfect with zero chain rattle. It just reminded me a lot of the grey GTI, an honest well used car that had been maintained without fail by its previous owner, who by the way had owned it since 2009, yes that's 14 years ago now, time does fly. There were stacks of paperwork to back all of this up with thousands spent, something which I rarely get on the cheaper stuff. Now whilst I've been talking you've probably spotted those seats and yes you're right they're not the correct ones for an R32. So in short the lad who was selling me the car bought it off the long term owner because it had the very fancy factory Recaro wingbacks. He unfortunately sold those a day before listing the car so I couldn't do a deal with them included and instead he just chucked in these Mark 5 GT seats. Ultimately it didn't matter as this just allowed me to get the car for a bargain price which by the way ended up being £2,500. He didn't have to offer it to me any lower than the advertised 2850 but it goes to show that there's still great people out there in the car scene. Now of course before heading up I still obtained a full history check from Car Vertical and they also are the sponsors for today's video. Now these reports tell you a number of things it would take me a while to go through all of it but some of the highlights include whether or not the car has been previously stolen, whether the mileage has been tampered with, if it's got any outstanding finance or if it's got any accident history and lo and behold the R32 came back clear on all fronts, something which is pretty unheard of even at the £4,000 mark. So yeah that combined with all the paperwork made for a pretty stress free purchase. Now even though this R32 came back all clear I do have an example report of one that wasn't quite so fortunate so let's take a look at that. Now as before we've got a breakdown at the top showing us some of the highlights of this R32 and it's got green ticks next to everything apart from the damage icon which has a little exclamation mark next to it. So the records tell us that it was an insurance write-off, more specifically a Cagri S in February 2020. This means that the damage was structural and the cool thing here is we've actually got photos to see the extent of it. So it looks like a pretty conclusive front-end impact. The side of it actually doesn't look too bad. I suppose most Mark 5s need wings at this point anyway. But yeah, very clean car. It looks brand new to be honest. It's also a manual, got leather interior, got low-line clocks. Ah, okay, no wonder it looks so new. It's actually got hardly any miles on it. Tells us that the last known mileage was actually 39,155. Can you imagine if this thing wasn't categorized it'd be worth quite a bit of money by now. Right then folks so that's car vertical in a nutshell. It's nice and easy to use and as ever I have got my own special link down below in the description. If you click on that and then use the code TRH what they'll do is they'll save you 10 percent off your next report. Make sure you get a check before you pick up a new car because you never know what you're in for and this will just save you a bunch of hassle and every time you guys use my code it goes towards one of these builds. But yeah, let's do a proper walk around of the R32. Right then, so we're starting off with our favourite topic at the moment, and that's rust. And the Mark V Golf is no stranger to it, but I think this one's got a bit too familiar. I mean, look at the state of this wing. We've had a few of these on the channel now, but I don't want to press it too hard because it's probably going to fall off. All of these bits are just, they're not really metal anymore. And the reason for this is there's a piece of foam that's behind there, which was installed from the factory. It gets all soggy and damp over the years and basically starts rotting this out. Now, the interesting thing with this one though, despite it being so cheap, is that the one on this side is completely fresh. There's actually an invoice for it from a couple of years ago. It's a genuine Volkswagen wing. It's all been painted to match. The color matches pretty good. 
And yeah, there's zero rust on it. The rust does continue around the rear of the vehicle. It's a common place for it to go around the badge, but this one's just more exaggerated than any other Mark V I've seen. It looks like it's crying in rust the way it's just following a pattern down. It's quite funny to be honest. It also doesn't open as well, so you have to get it from the inside. Which if you're wondering how to do, you climb into the boot like I've done. You take off this little trim piece and there's a little latch in there. And then you press it open. Right, so moving around to the front of the R32, it's quite distinctive compared to a regular GTI. You got this very squared off lower bumper area, and also we've got this grill, which is the genuine one, thankfully. Unfortunately, it's not perfect though, because the lower vents have been completely obliterated. It probably swallowed a small animal over the years, but it does look like it's ready for another piece of equipment to be fitted there, so I won't say anything more than that. We're also missing the VW badge, which is actually different to a normal Mark V Golf. The part number is actually shared with the VW Phaeton. The best way to spot if you still got it is there should be an outer ring and the VW logo doesn't go right to the edges. I'm probably gonna have to fork out for one and they're not cheap. Oh yeah, another cool thing, all R32s came with these very desirable Xenons from the factory. They're a standard fit item, they're not an option. You can't get them an option on the other Mark Vs. And the way to tell that they were a factory fit item is that they should have a headlight washer. Now you're probably thinking for two and a half thousand pounds, I bet that interior is a complete wreck and you'd be wrong because it's far from it. It's quite nice in here in fact. I drove it to the unit, it's about half an hour's drive. I took it on the motorway as well and yeah, no creaks or anything like that you gotta remember it's on 176 hours a mile so if it was going to creak it's allowed to do so got a multifunction steering wheel with the paddle shifters of course we've got the highland display we haven't got a factory navigation but that's easy enough to change there's a bit of wear around the selector but we could probably repaint that would have been nice to have a sunroof but again at this price i'm not going to complain and yeah we also have got a metal bottle opener which is nice to the left in Yeah, raise your hand if you thought all of these years that the blue on the R36 was the same as the one on the R32. It's not, it's totally different. So that's deep blue pearl, which is a more of a royal blue type of color. It's heading in that direction. Whereas the R36 is Biscay blue. It's more of a sea blue type of color. It's similar to the ramp and also that cladding up there. But yeah, if you're new to the channel and you're wondering why an R36 just came out of nowhere, it's one of the other projects that I'm doing. It's currently undergoing a full restoration. But yeah, I just wanna take this moment to just say, if you do enjoy content like this, make sure you go down and click subscribe. It helps a lot with the progress of the channel. We're gonna be doing a lot to this R32 also. Maybe in the same direction as this, but probably with some added power potentially. And I also wanna give a massive thanks to all the viewers who've been watching since the start. We hit 200K subs last week, so I appreciate all of the support. Right then, so we've got the R32 up onto the lift. It's the first time I've had a Mark V on here, so I just had to get the positioning all correct. But yeah, let's start over in the engine bay first, because this is arguably the main reason why you buy an R32, and that's this lovely 3.2 litre VR6. Yes, it does say V6 there. It technically is one as well, but it's a narrow angle. It's got one cylinder head. They're all in this odd layout. You can see by the positioning of the coil packs, they're just going in all sorts of directions. It's naturally aspirated in stock form, makes 250 horsepower. You guys will know all about it by now. The engine bay's got a bunch of dirt everywhere, but that to me is a good thing. It's an honest car. It's not something where people have tried to hide stuff. I mean, it's just little things like all of these T30s are in place, the ones for the grill as well. That seems to be clipped in relatively decently. And this is the new wing that I mentioned. So you can see it's got the factory part number there. I also spotted some new bolts there on the engine mount. So that's been done. You normally get quite a bit of movement on these. My old one definitely did. Doesn't seem to be any leaks around the block either. So the rocker cover should be in pretty decent condition. There is some over here, but that's probably from it being topped up over the years and just various bits of overspill. Now on the topic of oil, amongst all of these various big receipts like wheel bearings and brakes and whatnot, it's questionable about when it was last done. And because it's a relatively basic thing, we're gonna be doing that today, as well as checking out the spark plugs. Now, unfortunately, there was a slight change of plan. I still went ahead and pulled out the coil packs to check for any oil leaks and to get the plugs out. They were completely dry, but unfortunately my vacuum cleaner decided to stop working. So I couldn't clear out any light debris from the spark plug holds it wasn't that bad but i'm not going to take the chance of anything dropping in so we'll check these out in the next episode as it'll only take a few minutes now, i'm just going to get the wheels off but i thought i'd just show you guys the tires on the front We've got a Kumo PS71, so a decent mid-range tire. It's a 2254018 as it should be. The date of manufacture is the 37th week of 2020. So not an old tire, but it definitely is a worn one. We're almost at the legal limit marker and the outer edge has been completely obliterated. So there's probably some issues with the bushes on this car. 
Obviously the Zolders, which are the factory fit alloy, are definitely in need of a refurb, but we may do something slightly different. We've got the same tire on the rear, so it means it was changed at the same time, which is a great sign. Also, it's pretty much the same week of manufacture, but you can see by the wear pattern, the outer shoulder has definitely fared a lot better on the rear. Sign of a good Mark V, it's still got the under tray, which is great news. All these torques still look like torques also. I forgot that the R32's under tray is different. The GTI one has like a cut out here. It doesn't go all the way back like this. That transfer box looks very sweaty. Open this up. Someone like tighten that down. Okay, crack that off. We shall let that drain. Okay, so the underside of the two and a half thousand pound Golf, I suppose the first good news is that it's still up in the air. I was quite paranoid about whether or not it's gonna hold up, judging by all of this you can see here. I did have a good look at it when I went to view it, but that's partially down to the fact that the under trades are missing. It's supposed to be one running along the side here just like the R36 and you're probably thinking this is way more crusty than that. I was practically all blue around here. I haven't jacked it up on the pinch weld at the back, gone for this area here, which I've seen other VW specialists use. Fuel lines look okay. We have an external fuel filter that is different to the R36. That one's in the tank. I am gonna try and clean a lot of this up because I feel like it's just a bunch of mud that's making it worse than it actually is. On the back lower control arms all look as you would expect it. The hubs are not aluminium on this and all of the upper arms aren't either. But the cool thing with this being an early R32 is that it has an aluminium rear subframe. Quite a rare item. The later R32 Mark V's didn't get it. So look at it. It's nice and clean against all of the crusty things that are attached to it. I fancied putting one of them on the Passat, but unfortunately Passat and Golf items are not interchangeable. We've got the Haldex differential nestled in there also. No leaks as such. There's a control unit. This anti-roll bar's definitely seen better days. And brakes look pretty fresh. Got probably the original calipers on the rear. They are known to stick. And we've got this lovely exhaust, which definitely does sound pretty good. <laughs> Now, the reason why the R32 has this central exhaust in addition to this back box, which seems to take up more space on this side, is because of the battery tray. It hangs down below out of the car. I presume that's because it's not an AGM one, so they didn't want it in the cabin. This is the factory system. You've got the cats there. Doesn't seem to have any holes in it, but it looks like it's had a repair on the flexies. There also is an invoice for it, but the most glaringly obvious thing is this bracket, which is brand new. It's even got the VW Audi logo on it. These rear bushes and the control arms are quite cracked also. Same with that side. That's probably contributing to this interesting wear pattern on the tire. Now the arms, these are the cast ones that the Mark V comes with. They're not aluminium items like the ones you get on the Passat. So you will get this surface corrosion. But this caliper looks to be a refurbished one. You can see that the inner bracket is still blue, so that means that obviously that's retained. Disc, there's zero lip on that. The arch liner is seemingly intact, and that strut, I'll be honest folks, is not actually that bad. That Scirocco is probably just as rusty, and it's a 65 plate, exactly 10 years newer than this. Now the drop link, I can already tell that's not genuine, it's that Star branded one. We had a few of them on the other cars. But yeah, in terms of the engine, it looks like this has definitely been sweating out some oil. This is obviously the engine sump, and it's practically covered in it. That's the sump for the DSG gearbox. Again, it's quite crusty, but the R36 is exactly like that. Got a leak here, which is currently in progress. Uh, obviously, we're doing an oil change. But yeah, that's the transfer box. I think that's leaking also. Okay, so this is finished draining. So we'll put a new plug in. Thirty new meters. I cleaned it somewhat, but we're gonna have to do a dedicated underside clean on this. All right, thirty-six mil socket. See what we're in for. Quite a bit of oil is what we're in for. All over the floor. Right, so that made a massive mess. I've just spent the last 10 minutes cleaning all the oil up. It was absolutely everywhere. But in terms of the filter, it's gone all compressed and the fins of well, you can see in comparison to the new one how it's supposed to look like. This is a genuine one from TPS, but they're made by Pure Flux. 
as opposed to this one okay that is a genuine one also which is great the o-ring of course that's the part number if you fancied getting the same but to be honest you can just go to euro car parts and get a man filter or pure flux one from there it's not hard but i like to go with quantum's 5w40 it's nice and inexpensive i can get it from tps at the same time i'm getting other parts the capacity is more than five liters but i've got some spare okay that's assembled i've put some of the old oil on the o-ring as you should it's quite loose in there but i can't quite clip it in any further that is different to the r30 six filter our camera battery's low that's why we're on the iphone at the minute hopefully you guys haven't noticed too much of a difference brake cleaner of course even though this thing needs way more than just this bit here clean that up torque spec 25 newton meters as it suggests there easy 36 millimeter socket so it reaches that quite easily and the official oil capacity is five and a half liters which is less than i thought it was i thought it was in the six liter range but not so so i put around five liters in we'll check the dipstick i've left the coil pack disconnected let's try and crank it over to build a bit of oil pressure you can just start it straight away but i like doing it this way We've got no leaks underneath, which is good, so I can put the under tray back on. All change on the R32, all done. Right then, folks, I think this is a good place to end today's video and the introduction to the Mark V R32 project. I'm quite glad to be back in a Mark V again. Yeah, I think you probably can do a tally about how many times I've said Mark V in this video. There's plenty more coming up on this. We may add some more power to it, but I won't say anything just yet. Make sure you are subscribed for all of that future content, of course, and also follow me on Instagram to get updates in the meantime. And yeah, I'll see you in a few days' time for the next video.